Hi, welcome to Gary's Hobby Studio. In this video, I'm going to show you guys that I actually turned my laptop into a functional, so far it's still in testing, um, Proxmox virtual server. Uh, I'm actually even going to install an OS on it and actually see what, what happens. So let's go ahead and get started here. As soon as I can get my mouse to move the way I want it to. If I can find, there it is. <laughs> Not used to working with two screens with this. Uh, okay. All right. So as you can see, the Proxmox interface is up. Let me just shrink my little head down a little bit more here. You don't really need to see this fugly mug. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so as you can see, this is the main screen. I'm going to go ahead. I've already uploaded some ISOs that if you click on the arrow here and check the content, the local is where it stores the VMs. This drives only 120 gig uh, SSD that I've put in just for temp testing because I'll probably strip the files off of the two terabyte, reinstall everything on that, and that way I have a much larger drive to store ISOs and can create larger VMs and everything. Because this is a shame. It's 32 gigs of RAM in it. It's kind of a shame to throw it away. I can't use the memory because that's... Uh, ECC memory and this this one isn't or believe me I just pull the memory over so but as you can see I have CentOS DaVinci Resolve version CentOS Windows 2004 which is the latest version of Windows 10 uh, Debian 10.6 and these are for the drivers which only are needed for Windows machines Linux just works automatically don't even need some of the other funky stuff so uh, let's go back here. Let's create a VM. And then we're going to select the ISO image here. Change this to Windows. And it automatically defaults to 10, 2016, 2019. Uh, you, know, you can go as far back as XP in 2000. Um, you know, I might even have a couple of soft actual, I know I have XP, um, not sure about, I might have one or two windows 2000. So, but it's already for what we need. So, you know, storage local, which is, you know, local to the machine and then system type graphics card default, SCSI. Actually, let's select the QEMM agent because I'll have to install that. IDE. Let's see. Yeah, use a vert IO SCSI. Next CPU, we'll give it two cores and let's give it 16 gigs of RAM. say that should no. well that two gigs is 2048 
times 8, 16, 384. Sometimes my math is off. Okay, network, which should be the only active internet connection because it's only got one uh, port. So, and then finish. All right, so we actually have the machine tested. Now we have to go into the hardware and add a, another CD drive so that it has the drivers handy. And storage local. That. Create. All right. So now we'll boot off of this one. It'll pull the drivers from this one. We have 16 gigs of RAM, two sockets, one core per socket, the default BIOS. Um, here's where if you really wanted to, like you could change it. Like I know you have to change it to OVMF UEFI if you're going to do PCI pass through, but we're not going to do that just yet. So we'll go ahead and close that out. Uh, and besides that, you would have to reinstall it because it has to be installed under UEFI. It's really funky. So let's go ahead and start this. And let's get a console going so we can see what's going on. Never mind. Let's cancel. That took a minute. Okay. So let's close this menu up. All right. So we've got everything set for United States. So let's do that. Install now. I don't have a product key. You can use Windows 10 without a product key. There's just certain functions that are like eliminated that you can't really use. Like you can't change. I want to say you can change the backgrounds, but you can't turn off some of the features like how it'll give you like certain areas of the screen. If you rest your mouse on it, it gives you information and stuff. And ugh, I hate that. So. All right, so from this ISO that I created, I could do pro, educational, uh, home, single language, home, home end, which I'm not sure what the ends are. I'll probably play with it later. Um, but for just this demonstration, I'm just going to go with home. So we'll click on next. I accept the license terms that Microsoft can turn me into a human Sentai pad if they so choose. Now for here, we're not doing an upgrade because there's not an existing OS, so we have to select the custom Windows install, and as you can see, it does not see the driver, or does not see the hard drive, because I set it to SCSI. And to install that, click Browse, we go into here, and... Invert IO SCSI, highlight the Windows 10, and actually to highlight the AMD 64. Voila! We now have the drivers for the card. So we'll click Next. All right. So we have free space of 32 gigs, and it's a little light. I should have changed it, but that's okay. This is just for, again, just installation demo purposes. I'll see how well it runs before I do any other videos on doing PCI pass-through and, and some of the other things. I'd like to get DaVinci Resolve um, set up on my big one.
but I can't do PCI pass through. I can't do GPU pass through with the existing card, and I've got it set up to work with my. Uh, Oh, crap, my Plex Media server, I'd have to add a second card, which there's really no room because I have a fiber card in there. Um, if that, if the 420 actually had fiber ports built into it, I would probably put a second card in, and that way I could separate the two, resolve here, um, Plex Media server here. I really like the fact that I've been able to squeeze down 4K files down to a relatively decent size so that I can um, stream them to my Xbox. Because before, when they were like in their raw, like 80 gig size, it would just buffer so much. It just couldn't keep, the system couldn't keep up with it. Uh, I haven't tried like a full blown video file. I may try it with an existing one. I'd have to find one. I might still have one. I might have replaced everything by now. Uh, not 100% sure. And just see if it'll do the large size files because of that graphics card. I know the other ones work because I've recompressed them with uh, Handbrake. Sorry about that. I had to sneeze. Okay. So it's installing updates, finishing up. Woohoo! I know 2000, 2004 update for Windows, I'll be honest with you, is really weird. And it really is. Um, I've had problems with it. And it was acting funky on my, my W5. Like I said, that W540 is the weirdest machine that I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't know why, because I've installed Debian and I installed Pop OS, and if you go into like hit F12 to get the boot menu where you can select like network, CD, or boot from the ex what's existing on the C drive, it actually shows Debian and Pop OS as a selection, but there's no other hard drive than the one single two and a half inch drive that's in there. So I don't know why it's still reading those two when it's not there. It's really odd. I may have to see about doing a factory data reset to see if I can try to wipe that stuff out. Now, granted, I didn't give it a lot of... I gave it more memory than I gave it cores. Um, this thing's a four-core laptop, and it's an Intel processor, so it has eight threads. So I initially have... I, I basically have eight CPU cores for the virtual machines. Um, you know, you can probably do more, but the only, the only problem that you'll end up running into is because... Because the CPU can run two threads at a time, you know, each core can do two threads. The problem is, is if you have so many machines that have a total of 16 cores, but you only have eight cores available, you're going to notice a little performance hit. So I try not to overdo the hardware. I mean, I can see... Maybe if your virtual machines don't do much, don't require a lot of CPU power, and if you're using single cores, once you max out, then you could probably maybe put extras because it would do a, I would hope it would do a balancing act between you know what's running using what. Um, otherwise, you could run into insufficient resources. Your uh, virtual machines could crash, and. I don't like crashing. <laughs> I've crashed enough cards in my lifetime. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I don't want to sign up for a stupid Microsoft account. I want to create a local account. Ugh. You must have a Microsoft Online account. <laughs> I hate that. Okay.
these are just dumb responses to this. The wonderful, we want to collect everything about you. I usually turn this all this stuff off as much as possible. I know they still collect data. And even though they say that, well, it, it sends the minimum, but define the minimum. I mean, data collection is data collection. Since when does the operating system need to do that? I just hate the whole, you know, we have to have your data and all that crap. No, I don't want to worry about that. Not now. Because I can't anyways, because it doesn't have the microphone and that because, you know, it's a virtual machine, not a full machine. I'd be surprised how many times a day I have to listen to this. And I'm helping users on the phone. Because with my company, we send them out to our different offices and then they, they get to set them up. Uh, the people in my office, you know, headquarters, they, they actually get the benefit of me setting the machine up, taking it to them, and swapping it out. Which is even funnier because a lot of times people don't remember. I, I swear, <laughs> I don't understand why. Probably because maybe they use their email and everything more and that there and they don't think but after three years of seeing their name on the screen and how the username is set up you would think that they would remember that the Windows username is not their email but unfortunately they keep putting their email in and I have to stop them no that's not it and then they forget to put their email password in for their Windows password and when it fails, I have to go, no, it's what you use to log into the computer all the time. But this is what I use. No, it's not. <laughs> the life of an IT person. Searching for display drivers to improve performance. Yeah, it's going to suck. Okay. So, let's see, what else do we have to do? And the reason with those vert IO drivers, because there's like a lot of different things, and I'll, I'll show you here in a second. This piece, all right. So. All right. Ethernet controller. And select the CD drive that that's in. Okay, so that's done. Nope, we don't want that. Okay, so we'll close that. And then PCI device. Okay. And one more time here. All right. So all those devices should be gone. Yes. All right. Now there's a couple of other things that you, you actually have to install. I may not remember them because it's been a while since I've had to set up the balloon driver and stuff. I don't know if I have that on my virtual machine or not. I'll have to check. Um, because here's here's why. And let me... Okay, because it says here that the guest agent isn't running. This would tell you the IP address. Plus, as you can see, it shows that the memory usage is really high. If we go back over here to Windows, Task Manager... More details, performance. 
And as you can see here, it's only using two, but in Proxmox it shows that it's using like 15 gig. It's almost maxed out, when in actuality it isn't. And let's change this to... Which is weird, it says it's only got one virtual processor. But it should have two. That's probably also due to the balloon information, but... Anyways, um, if I remember correctly... Yeah, you gotta copy this. I think I spelled that right. Probably didn't. No, I did. Okay, cool. <laughs> and let me... I don't remember because, like I said, it's been a while. Yeah, that's it. Because you actually have to run this command through the command line. Yeah, I've been doing too much Debian. <laughs> command ELN SBR dot exe dash I what oh uh, please don't tell me I gotta run this as freaking I probably gotta run it as admin hate that you don't have to run this as admin Okay, let's try this again. Yep. <clears throat> Hate that. Okay, so that's for the balloon service. Now, I don't know if that changed anything or not, so let's go ahead and jump back over here. Huh. And look, the memory usage actually reflects now what Windows says, so that's why you should install the balloon driver so that, you know, this doesn't wig itself out. Now, you need the guest agent running so it'll show, like, what the IP address is. So we go back over here. And... Actually, we need to go to that CD. Here we go, guest agent. And then they give you the 
32 bit, 64 bit. Obviously, I'm running 64 bit. Okay. So now that that's running and that's installed, and there we go. And now you can see the IP address here for the actual machine. Now the only time this is not going to work is if you're running any kind of Linux distribution because you don't put the balloon driver on, you don't put the um, the guest agent on. Sorry, my mind just went blank. Um, that's pretty much it for Proxmox. Proxmox is real easy to install. Uh, as you saw, it's real easy to select what um, to select your options and everything. This is just you, your like if as long as you're not using anything like I said, if you're not trying to create a Plex Media server or anything that's kind of graphic intensive, you know, setting up the the VMs real easy because this is pretty much how I have my. Uh, Oh crap. Again, sorry, mine's drawing a blank here. My um, Unify controller is that I have it through a Debian VM. Uh, I like Debian. Debian's solid as a rock. Uh, if it, if whatever I need to run has a, a deb file, I'm definitely going to create a Debian VM for it. I'm not going to run it on Windows because my controller for my Unify stuff really rock solid, I, you know. Um, but you know this way here you know if you have some old old hardware like a laptop you can definitely do it um, hopefully you have a big enough hard drive to let the operating system have space space to store ISO space to store VMs because um, like I said this is just a test setup if I'm gonna go forward with this because uh, right now I have that connected to the old Cisco switch that's underneath my PFSense router. Uh, yeah, I know it's 10100, but like I said, for basically what I'm testing it for, or, or what I'm going to be using to test, like, you know, OSs, um, stuff like that, the network speed's not a big issue. So it may change if I ever get the Gen 2 switch. Um, maybe, but, you know, I can set aside a certain amount of ports, you know, VLAN them off onto their own VLAN, set it up through PFSense so that they can, you know, get out to the internet and everything, and that way it's there. Um, I know Unify is finally coming out with Wi-Fi 6 uh, access points, and because their old ones are actually going to, which is really weird, which I have to keep an older version of the software because I was thinking about... Um, figuring out how to control unified devices across the internet because I was thinking about giving my in-laws my old uh, ACLR. I just know that I can't update it and I have to figure out how to keep that software from updating because uh, I'll run another Debian VM for, you know, like, um, however I have, like, if I was going to go with the naming convention that I do with this, like, test dash whatever uh, I would probably call it test dash family unify and then that way anything that somebody else can use because of their limited you know like what most of my family you know me them that way they can use my old hardware it doesn't end up in a landfill it increases their performance and everything's hunky-dory um that's what i'm that's what i was looking to do i was thinking about buying a new one at some point when they came out with that but a um, couple of things i have to look over for that but as you can see as you you know like i said everything's nice and neat now you know cp usage is low memory usage is low um it's like i said proxmox is a really nice um virtualization it's free you can definitely donate money to them um, as a matter of fact let me show you that 
want to say it's proxmox.com. Yeah. All right. So basically, virtualization and like here's their pricing. And I think this stuff actually went up. Now, the nice thing is it's not by core any, you know, like the other ones, like VMware. I, I want to say VMware and everybody else is charging a per core now because there's so many cores per socket. Uh, they're still going by CPU socket. So if you have one CPU, it's 85 euros, which whatever that is in... which I don't know what the heck that is. I have this app on my phone, so that's why I always go to their site. So let's see, let's switch that. 85 Euro. Ooh, but that's a year. And so if you have one CPU, that's, that's a little over $100 a year, which isn't bad. I'm sure if you price, like, look at the prices of the other ones. That's part of the reason why I was, because I was actually thinking, because um, at first, my first virtualization software with my 710, sorry, my nose is, like, itchy for some reason. Um, my 710, I actually used, was using Zen Server because I really liked its layout and everything, and it was... It was just as simple, maybe even a little little simpler than um, than this one. But what happened was, at a certain version that uh, Citrix was going to do because they bought Zen Server, they were going to remove a feature that I was already using that was in the free, and make it an enterprise support where you actually had to pay to enable the feature now i got a temporary license because i was i i think before i set up my pf sense server i had the 410 i connected them up i moved my vms from this machine from the 710 to the 410 because i only had two domain controllers and was just starting out setting up my home network and I wanted to make sure that I could duplicate what that was on that one with this and I was able to do it I was able to, to recreate everything it's really funky and I I tried to see if there was just some way I could export those off a of Zen server and import them onto Proxmox but it just didn't work out that way um, the other thing was is that there was the XCPNG, which is an offshoot of Zen Server. It's like Proxmox. It's fully, fully available. The only thing was is that it wasn't released as stable at the time when I needed to change it because of what was going on. And I didn't want to update it because I'm sure at some point I would have had to have updated it from Zen Server which would have cost me that feature so I got a free light like 90 day trial license so that I could enable the features to be able to move my VMs from the one machine to the other recreated everything here on Proxmox reset up everything with the whole domain rights and all this other stuff and got everything up and running took that out and that became PFSense because that was the original intent of it anyways um, I haven't tried XCPNG. Uh, I know Lawrence from or uh, Tom from Lawrence Systems. He he runs that a lot, and I've seen it. The interface is nice. It actually looks, a, I wouldn't I wouldn't say similar, but it has similar styling. Because I I, I did have the free version of um, ESXi from from uh, VMware. Uh, sorry, my brain's just... But uh, but basically, I was going to use that, but it was limited in features too, and some of what I needed to do was not available in the free, and what was going to be taken out of that, so that's why I ended up with Proxmox. And at some point, when I win the lottery and have money, I have no problems donating, because it'll be, for me, if I get another virtual server. Like, the test one, 
I'm not going to even I'm not I'm I'm not even gonna pay them for that because that's the whole purpose behind it, it's a test one. If it fucks up, I don't care. This one I wouldn't mind at least giving them some support money just so that way that they have you know because like I said I believe in supporting products you know I don't believe in uh, in just you know using it willy nilly and you know but if I could donate to everybody that I've had free software for I'd be broke <laughs> I really would um, some stuff I have donated to some things I just couldn't have the money because of other things that are going on in my life but I like Proxmox uh, some people don't like it for obvious reasons um, I know Uncle Joe's Playhouse he's he's flip-flop back and forth between Proxmox XCPNG because I watch his videos too because like I don't know everything you know I only know what I know and what I learn whether it be reading stuff or trying stuff out on my own and have to dig through forums and stuff of figuring out you know what the issue is and correcting it and everything kind of like how I it took me finding a video and um, searching the forums to get GPU pass through working on my 420 um, you know, I, 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 I've seen him flip-flop Unky Joe at Unky Joe's Playhouse. I mean, I wouldn't mind trying them out. Um, you know, definitely got another spare 120, or if I move uh, this installation of Proxmox, I'll probably just end up reinstalling it on that 2 terabyte drive. I could install it, get it set up, and then I can use the 120 to try out XCPNG, see if I like it. Um, you know, the, because the only thing I don't like is the fact that you have to, because this is, this is the whole thing. It uses this Zen Orchestra. It has like a light version, but you have to have it running as a virtual machine on the machine to be able to access its web interface. Like, you know, this here, sorry, click the wrong tab. This is running on the actual Proxmox server. It's not... It's not a VM running to give you access to it. That's what I don't like about XCPNG. Because if your virtual server goes down that runs that, and let's just say you have five of those servers, and you only have the one, because I'm sure that you can just use that one interface to control all five servers. Well, what if that server decides to fry and it doesn't run? What happens if the uh, if you have to reboot it for some reason? You you lose the interface, you lose connection to everything else. You know now, granted, on a reboot, yeah, it'll take some time and then it'll come back up. But but what happens if in the meantime, when you take that one down, something else happens to another one? Whether it be that's for system maintenance because you know you got to clean the dust out or change a part or you know because you know, or add a drive you know or you know whatever whatever that you would like if you would have to add more memory because you shut that off if anybody needs to look at some of the other virtual servers you can't do it and that means you would have to run an instance of that Zen Orchestra on each one just to continue that which. I guess that would be good for redundancy, but to me, and it's just my take from understanding it. I haven't played with it, but just from watching it and 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 reading about it, the way I'm looking at it is you're you're wasting, in my opinion, system resources that you're already running on the bare metal, the actual OS, and then this machine handles throwing out the web web page so that you can view it change it and do whatever you got to do to it when you're working on it so it's already running and it may take up just a little more resources where a full like a virtual machine to run that on because i think i think tom did do a, a video on it but to me it, it just it uses up a little more you know it uses up a, more ram more 
hard drive space because you now have a VM running just to control the machine that it's running on. If that makes any kind of sense. It's kind of like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube inside of a Rubik's Cube. And I probably just gave somebody an idea for a toy. But to me, you, you wasted a lot of plastic because it's, it's going to be hard. Well, for the person, it's, it's going to be hard to solve it. Well, I don't know. because Those people were able to do this better than I can. I still can't solve this thing to this day. But to me, it's just... It's kind of like... Okay, here's a, here's a better way of putting it. Not a Rubik's Cube inside of a Rubik's Cube. Because um, sometimes I don't come up with the right analogies. But if I were to pop this cube off, okay, it's going to make it harder for somebody to solve because they don't have that piece. You see? Or, even more confusing, I take this piece off and this piece off and swap the colors around because I know that the way they're placed from that there from a long time ago, if you take the stickers off and change it, then it changes the way the cube has to be solved because the, it's supposed to go a certain way from what I remember. I could be wrong. But you just change the resources because you have to run that. I don't think I came up with the, or the best analogy, but but that's that's my take on xcpng is that you're wasting resources to have a graphical interface because you have to have that that vm running with that where this is running because the bare it's running on the bare metal which again i know that anytime they add features and that it, it uses a little more memory, uses a little more hard drive space to store those functions so it can access it, and I get that. But I'm looking at it as, okay, so it uses maybe 1% more system resources to have it running on the bare metal with everything else. Just 1%. And that's hard drive space. That's 1% hard drive space, 1% RAM. Instead of, say, 10% hard drive space because you now had to create that you know 30 gig 20 gig VM whatever size it needs and it now uses 10% more RAM because it's a VM so that's like I said again that's my take on it it may not be that I'm, I may I'm, I may do a video on that because I've been dying to play with it and now that I have a couple of systems, like between that old laptop and the old Dell server there on the floor, I can actually look into it and just see, um, check that out. Check that one out. Check out, um, what was the other one? I don't know. I don't remember now. <laughs> But I can check out other virtualization software, uh, the XCPNG, just to see how it how it is compared to Proxmox. Um, I know it's going to be pretty similar to again Zen Server, um, but the uh, I'll definitely cut out a lot of dead space. But that's, that's pretty much how you would set up a Windows machine. Um, I could probably... But that's just the basics on it. If I, if I do any more videos on it, depending upon how people reach out about this video, um, I can definitely go through how to set up the GPU pass-through because this has GPU pass-through capability, which is weird. And the shocking thing is VirtualBox supposedly has that but it only works with you have a Linux host and using VirtualBox and you can do that which to me doesn't make sense it really doesn't which I don't know why it can work for Linux but not for a Windows host so uh, but other than that um, tell me what you think if you like what I did uh, please hit the like subscribe hit the bell icon so that you can see you know see when I post new stuff 
Also, I want to thank all the the new people that have decided to follow me, my my ramblings. <laughs> uh, I got nine new subscribers. Thank you guys very much. Um, you know, if I ever hit a hundred, uh, I'll have to think of what I might do if I if I would hit a hundred. Um, not exactly sure if you guys got any ideas. Hey, throw them in the comments, man. I I love I love hearing from people. You know, regardless whether you you like it, hate it, you know that's fine. That's the only way I'm going to grow is by getting you know feedback of any kind. 